Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to learn about error handling. Now as programmers, I'm sure we've experienced a variety of errors in the past. And guess what? We're going to continue to, because it's inevitable. But what makes this okay is being able to handle them. And in today's video, we're going to learn different ways to handle different errors. All right? So um, create a new project and let's learn together. In programming, we have about three main types of errors. The first one is the syntax error, then the logical error, and the runtime error. Now, the syntax error is actually very common. And uh, let me give an example. So let's say we have an if statement, but we forget to add a condition, right? This is a syntax error, and it happens even before the application is run, all right? And to fix this, simply to put in a condition like that to satisfy the syntax and everything is good. Now the other type of error, the logical error, is when your program is supposed to act a certain way, but then it does something else. A typical example can be um, writing a program to print the addition of two numbers. But what you do is, let's say you have a function that says sum x as an int and y as an int as well to return an integer but then this simply returns 1 plus 1 and if I were to call sum and pass in 5 and um, 9 let's just add this like this so this is going to return 2 right this is a logical error because this um, operation is actually wrong all right and you can fix this by putting in x and y and it's going to work that makes sense. Now, in this video, we're going to be more focused on the runtime error because these are errors that um, actually satisfy the syntax. So the syntax is correct. But when you run the program, it encounters a scenario or a condition that causes the app to crash or to fail. All right. So for this example, what I want us to do is to create a function that allows us to read the content of a file. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call this um, read text file like this. And it's going to take in the name of the file as a string. And I'm going to return the content as a string. So first of all, let's actually create a file. So I'm going to open this guy up and in our resources, right click new file. And I'm going to call this, um, let's say hello.txt. And the content, we're going to say, howdy do, amigo. All right. So save this, let's close this, and go back. Oh. All right. Great. So what I want to do now is to read the content of the file and display it right here. So I'm going to call... Print, uh, I'm going to print out the results from read text file. I'm going to pass in a name. Whatever name we pass in, I could simply just pass in annual like this. All right. So how do we read the content of the file? So first of all, I need to get the um, URL. I'm just going to say let uh, file URL be equal to uh, bundle dot main main dot url for resource we're going to use this one and we're going to be getting the resource name and the extension is simply going to be txt beautiful now if you look over here you're going to see that this is an optional url so i want to make sure that the file actually exists so this is sort of like a way of handling error um, using a guard statement so i'm going to use a guard and say, make sure that the file exists, right? Else, we're simply going to return file. And I'm just going to add guard here, just so we know that this error was thrown from the guard statement. So guard file does not exist. Great. Now, otherwise, I want us to get the content of the file right 
and we're simply going to say let text be equal to string and content of URL. Now I want us to take note of this thing right here. This says throws and it means that it's possible for this particular operation to fail and when this happens we actually need to handle this. So I'm gonna say contents of URL. I'm gonna pass in file URL just like that. But we're gonna see an error. So it says call can throw but is not marked with try and error is not handled. So we actually need to handle the scenario where this guy does not work. Now we can actually handle this in different ways and then we're gonna see those ways in this video. So the first is to actually just write in the keyword try and put a question mark like that. So what we're saying here is try to execute this if it does fail, then set the value of text to be nil. So if we were to hold down option and click here, we're going to see that text is of type optional string. So if this guy fails, the value of text is going to be nil. So after that, we're simply going to say return and return the text. All right. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we have. Okay. So this is actually expecting an optional string. So we can add a default value and say um, file not found like this. All right. So you can see over here, guard file does not exist. So it was actually handled from this particular block right here. All right. Now let's actually put in a valid name. And I believe we called our file hello, not hello. So uh, we called it hello, and if we were to run this again, we should see the content of the file. How do you do, amigo? All right, so it works very well. That's good. Now let's see a scenario where uh, this guy actually fails, so that this guy is nil, and then we see the default value. All right, so we're going to change the file URL and say file URL dot append path component, and I'm sim simply going to call this invalid. Uh, file just like that and we need to change this to a variable and this is okay so if we run this again we should see file not found good which is actually this guy so you can see that this actually handled the error so this failed but then it returned a nil instead cool now you've probably guessed and since we have an optional a question mark here we could replace this with a bang. But can you guess the difference between these two? Yeah, I'm sure you did. This is not an optional, meaning that it has to pass. If it does not pass, this is going to crash. Let's see that in action. So I'm going to remove all of these. And for now, I'm going to comment this guy out and run it again. How do you do, amigo? Works perfectly. But if we were to change the file to something that does not exist and we run this again, of course, we see a crash and we can see the file invalid file could not be opened. Now, there's a good news. We can handle this, of course. How do we do that? What we're going to do is use a different method rather than specifying a bang or a question mark. We're going to wrap this or execute this particular block of code or this particular line of code in a do catch block. All right? So within our do block, we're going to copy all of this code that could fail and paste that right there. And then we're going to remove the bang just so it doesn't force it. And when we're done, at this point, we have access to try. Sorry, we have access to the content. And if you check, it's actually not nil. Or, sorry, it's not optional, rather. So at this point, we can actually say return and then return the text. So what happens here is when we get to this block, it tries to execute this. 
and get the contents of the file. If it passes, the contents is stored in our text and then returned. If it does not pass, that means it failed, it immediately comes to our catch block and then executes. So I can simply add, well, simply add a return here. There's been an error. All right. So I'm not going to need this here. So um, let's actually try to run this without any errors first. So I'm going to run this and we can see how to do Amigo. Perfect. It works fine. And if we were to make it an invalid file and run it again, we should see there's been an error. Awesome. Awesome. Now we can actually go one step further and know the exact error that occurred. Now in our catch block, we have access automatically to a variable called error. Now you could specify it here as error, or if you don't want to, you don't need to. So I'm just going to remove this. And right here, I'm going to say error dot. I can simply get the localized description from our error. And if we were to run this again, hoping that it fails, we're going to see the error message. The file, invalid file, could not be opened. I can see that this is actually very nice, very helpful, because we could actually display this error message to the user. And rather than keeping them in suspense or uh, just leaving a blank screen, we can display that something actually went wrong so that they know. All right. So it's good user experience. Now, there's actually one more way we can handle this error. So first, just to go over it again, we tried the optional, right, like this. Then we tried the bang like that. And then we've used the do catch block. All right. That makes sense. Now, another way we can handle this error is to propagate the error out of this particular function to wherever the function is being called. All right. And let's see how that is done. So what we need to do is we can simply just copy all of these out of this place and paste it right here and get rid of the do catch. Now, when we do this, since we're using a try and not forcing, not using the question mark, we need to throw this error. So what we're going to do is just right after the uh, parentheses right here, we're going to use the keyword throws like that. So we're simply saying that this function could throw an error. So wherever this function is being called, it needs to be handled, just like we had to handle this particular one. All right. And the same thing, the same implementation we've done here, we have to do that right here. So we can decide to get the results or just say content like this and paste this here, but then we need to use try or the bang or wrap it in a do catch. Okay. I'm just going to use this one and I'm going to print the content. And if we were to run this, we're going to see that it returned nil because it actually failed right here. So if we wanted, if we wanted to see the error, we could opt in for the try catch. And this time, let's just use the let error like that. And where are you, my friend? Right here. Well, both paste here. And then we can easily print the error here. Error, huh? Why did I try there? Don't mind me, man. So error. And I'm going to paste in error dot localized. Well, let's just fix this. So this is not try, it's do. That was just my silly mistake. So do, and this should be localized description. Wonderful. So we can run this again. And this time around, yeah. So since we have optional, it didn't go to the catch, but instead came to the print. So I need to remove this and run it again, and we should see the error printed right here. All right.
So we've covered four different methods. The first is to use the optional try, to use the bang try, to use the do catch right here, or to actually throw the error away. So I don't want to have anything to do with this. If you want to use my function, then you handle it yourself. That's simply what the throws is saying. There's one more thing I'd like to teach you, but I'm going to move that to another video. And that's simply how to create your own custom errors, right? So as uh, we move forward, we're going to be developing um, solid applications that perform validations and network queries. So we're going to need to display some custom errors to the user, all right? Now we're going to see how this is done in the next video. So just stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click on the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, subscribe, turn on notification, and see you guys at the next video. Yeah.